Today we are going to study about how to have your own first Ionic app. This is the chapter number three from the book Ionic 6 Create Awesome Apps for iOS, Android, Desktop and Web authored by Andres Dormont. In this third chapter, the author says how to start a very simple app. It's called as a first app. So the output of this app will look like this. It will be running on localhost colon 8100. There are three tabs. Tab 1, tab 2. You can click on tab 1, tab 2, tab 3. So in my laptop here, what I've done, I've created a folder called BM2301, which is the module ID or module code in the desktop. And then I've created subfolders, one of them called as Ionic, the other one called Projects. Inside projects, I do have many folders here. So this is the folder from which the app is actually running. So if you want to start creating this app from the scratch, what you have to do is you should make sure you have Ionic installed in your laptop first or in your machine first. After this, I'm going to go to my desktop, to the same folder which I've described to you. I'm actually typing BM and pressing tab to complete the remining. This tab can be used provided there is no other ambiguity behind. And then I'm saying Ionic slash projects. So I'm here. Inside, I'm going to create a new folder. Right? I'm going to call a new folder. This folder would be first app folder. So how to create it? So you have to issue a statement called Ionic start first dash app. The first dash app is the folder name by which the app will be created. So when I press enter, it's going to take a little long time, so I'm going to run it from the actually created first app in my first app one folder. So here it's asking me to choose a framework. I'm going to choose Angular. So whatever is selected, if you press enter, that is selected by this arrow. If you want to choose others, you have to go up or down key accordingly, right? So I select Angular. Then it's asking what kind of template I need. In this app, I'm looking for a tabs template. I need tabs. So press tabs, I mean enter. Now it starts creating the folder. It starts downloading files for you. Uh, downloading, extraction, this takes a, quite a good amount of time. Sometimes it can be longer, depends on the network speed. And then it will ask you whether you need to create an account for you in Ionic. You could say no for it. You don't need to create any account to run your own app. And that will end your app creation. So at the end of the day, you will have a folder like this right and how do you run it so if i want to run it i'm going to issue a command called ionic surf by the way to do that i have to let me stop this i'll do like this i go into first app one because that is a folder where i have created before from here i type ionic surf ionic space surf okay it should be inside the folder of your own project once you are in, it's going to start like this. This is what you will see. So if you can click on tab 1, tab 2, or tab 3, this is what you will see. Okay. So now this is a basic app which is able to run right now. So how does it work like? If you go into the folder, you will find there are lots of folders here, subfolders. Nodes, modules. This is the plenty of modules which has been added to your app. And then you have SRC folder. This is the main folder of our focus. Okay, before we go into the folder structure, let's do a few things right now. All right, once you are in your browser where the app is actually running, right, you can do what is called, you want to do what is called as uh, developer tools. So let's go in here. So this is my second one that is running. So I'm going here. I'm going to go here, I'm going to choose under more tools, I'm going to use developer tools, right? Once you are there here, right, you are in the developer tools, here you could see, you could check few things around here. You can see the console, you can see the sources, you click this, you can see various options here, okay? There are plenty of options that are around here. You can also click on this. This one will make your app to be running on a mobile phone. So this is a mobile phone. You can choose, let's say I'm going to run on iPhone. You will see how it appears. If you want to choose on something else, right, you could choose. 
you will see how it appears on different mobile devices. If you want to see on a PC, on a browser, it's going to appear like this. So this is a icon which you can click to switch between uh, the phone and and also your laptop. Okay, you can check this here. This is one advantage. And then once you are here, you can also rotate. If you rotate the phone, how does it appear? So you can click on this icon here to see rotating as well. Right. So these are quite useful options for you. Now let's move on. Let's keep it under and the normal approach of the browser. Let's close the other tab here, okay? So I'm gonna open up the code from this folder. So I'm gonna go here under first app one, SRC. I'm gonna open app folder. I'm gonna go to tab one. I'm gonna open tab one dot page.html. I'm gonna open it in a notepad plus plus file. Here it is open right now, okay? This is what has been open for you. So let's assume I'm gonna change things here. Okay, let's say I'm going to change it as 1A page, right? I'll call it as 1A, right? Let's save it. Go back here. You'll see it reloads and it becomes 1A immediately, okay? So the good thing is you can change the code straight away and you will see the difference in the code itself. Now you see I change it back to 1, it will become 1 page, tab 1 page right now, right? So you can see live changes in it. Let's assume you go further into here. You go to the app, you go to, let's say go back to SRC, go to themes, you have variable.scss. This is your style sheet file. Let's open it in Notepad++ again. Here you have your style sheet file, okay? Here, if you wanna change few things, you could also do so. So here you will see it's written here, HTML, you can change the color, you can change whatever here you will see changes will be reflected straight away, okay? This is a good thing. So let's say I have this Fs here. So let's assume I'm gonna put here all zeros. Let's see what happens, all right? So if I'm gonna go here, right, you will see it reloads, but it doesn't make any change on this, right? So you need to know what to change, what to change so that you can see an outcome of it, okay? So this is a good thing. You can check here, it says here dark, let's say light, Right, if you put it as light, for example, and it will be automatically loaded, so the page has changed, right? So you can change from whatever scheme to whatever scheme, accordingly things will be changed. So advantage here, you can see live changes on the mobile phone itself or on this um, browser itself. So let's try to understand the structure of um, the folders here. So how does it create? So if you go in, the main one you have what is called dot angular folder this is actually used for caching bills this is mainly for uh, angular purposes and then you also have node modules node underscore module folder which is this one you will find this contains all the libraries that you are going to use for your own app and then you have the src folder okay this is actually the folder which is for development purpose most of the things are here Right, whatever you need will be here. You will find app folder, which is actually the main uh, folder of your app, app folder. If you go in, you will find you have app.module.ts, you will have app.component.ts, okay? These things will be there, right? And then if you go in further, you have explore container. This is actually used by all the tabs here. And then you have each tab is mentioned here separately. Tab one, tab two, tab three, tab four and then also tabs. If you go into tab one, for example, you'll find there is a tab one.module.ts. Uh, this is the module page. Basically, it contains all the imports. And then you have the HTML page, which is tab one.page.html. This is what will contain the visible elements of the page. Then you have tab one.page.scss. This is actually the SCSS file, which is the style sheet file, which is syntactically extended CSS file which is for coloring changes, you know, the, the design of it. Then you have what is called specs file, which is not here in the old versions they had. Specs.ts basically here, right? This is mainly whatever is specs, this is actually used for testing purpose. So you don't need to work on it right now, but it could be needed for future purposes. And then there is a tab1.page.ts file. This is one of the important files 
which is the TypeScript file. This is like the JavaScript file, which will tell you what to do when some actions are being done. And going back, if you go to the app folder, you also have app-routing.module.ts. You also have app.component.html and then app.component.scripts.ts, app.component.scss, and you also have app.module.ts. All these files are here. These are like the top level files. And one of the important thing you need is a routing.module.ts file. Let's open it here in the, in the, in the notepad plus plus. You can see it says what happens when I load, where should I go? Okay. Where should I first load? Which page should I load first? Okay. And that is the idea here. It says go into tabs, tabs.module has to be loaded. And then if you go into, let's say, uh, tabs, and then you will find here, there's a routing file here. You go in here, it says, what is tab one connected to, tab two connected to, tab three connected to. So the routing is like for navigation purpose. It is connect from one place to another. So if you go back, you also have a search folder. So this is where you normally have the media files, like images, like uh, those elements there. And then if you go further on, you have what is called environments file. Uh, this is actually like uh, custom information is provided or some predefined information is provided here. So you can check here if there is some information to be provided, you will store it here. And then if you go further on, you will find global.acss. This is the global style sheet file. You have the index.html, right? This is actually a startup file for your app. So if I open it here, you will see it has almost nothing right now. The body has almost nothing because it is going to direct it to the tabs file, okay? And then you have, uh, which is app root. So you will find here it's called app root here, app dash root. So this is the entry point for every app around. Then going back to SRC, you will find there is main.ts and there are other files as well, okay? So there are many such files. So in this book, the author has done um, what is called as a side menu. So if suppose you want to have a side menu, I'm going to stop it by using control C, going a step behind, CD space, double dot, which will take me to the previous folder. So I am going to say Ionic start, let's say we call it as Bob Tools, and then side menu, dash dash type equal to Angular. So if you put dash dash, because Angular does not ask you whether you need to select Angular or not. Okay. So this time it's going to create a folder under projects called Bob Tools. So if I go back here under projects, you will find Bob Tools is being created right now. So it will now start putting in all the necessary files there. It is loading everything. So you will find the files are being loaded. Um, once you run this thing, once you go and run it, you will see it has a side menu. The whole idea is to have a side menu, right? Previous time we took tabs, we selected tabs from the menu there. Right now, instead of that, we are just automatically saying, please use a side menu, okay? So it has to download many things, it will take some time. Once it is ready, you can run it using the same command, which is ionic space serve, right? So you will find on the side menu, but if you click on side menu, almost nothing will happen because you have not created the necessary elements in there. I hope this makes our uh, learning clear.